Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach Sion Ministries. Sion Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. Bospa'i, by the way, how's it going? That's modern Greek. We learned some goodies along the way of the study of John 1.1, 1, 1, even though that's not here, but we learned that. Yasas, that's the formal way of saying hello, one of the formal ways of saying hello in, in modern Greek, and Yasu, Okay, um, and that's uh, one of the ways of saying hello in an informal way to your buddies and pals because that's what they deserve. Okay, <laughs> and so we already prayed for the study, and so we're continuing the full Greek construction of John 1 1. And the modern uh, pronunciation goes something like this quote, Enarchi in ologos, que ologos in proston teon, que teos in ologos. Enarchi in o logos, que o logos in proston theon, que theos in o logos. Enarchi in o logos, que o logos in proston theon, que theos in o logos. Now the biblical pronunciation goes something like this, quote, Enarchi in ha logos, kai ha logos in proston theon, kai theos in ha logos. En arche en ha lagas, kai ha lagas en prostantean, kai feas en ha lagas. En or en arche en ha lagas, kai ha lagas en prostantean, kai feas en ha lagas. En arche en ha lagas, kai ha Lagas en prostantean. Kai feas en ha lagas. End quote. Now, we've been studying this verse in the full Greek, Greek construction for several years. One thing that comes into mind is the eternal subsistence of lagas with theos. We can't forget that he was with two other persons and one is recorded right here, who we now know as God the Father. Okay, he wasn't the father at the time. We see Hebrews chapter 1, verses 5, verses 5 and 6, and chapter 5, verse 5, and chapter 7, verse 3, where it says, A patron, a metron. No father, no mother. Okay, so that's just the deal. Now, how many of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of zillions? Is there a, such a number as kazillion? I mean, what is the ultimate number? What is the ultimate degree of subsistence? Well, the ultimate degree of subsistence is right here recorded, right in front of our panim, our faces, okay, in Hebrew, panim, you know. And it is absolutely staggering. Staggering. I say staggering. Now, we know that the Trinity wasn't created. They didn't pop on the scene. Nobody created the Trinity. Now, that's hard to imagine for us, for us, who have finite minds, and actually it's a finite verb over here, by the way, ain't, that's a finite verb, versus uh, uh, infinitive or a verb, you know, but we're going to check that out, and all its glory. Incidentally, we can, we, can, we can check out the full Greek construction of this, and get to the, full, the fullness of glory of the Greek, but we can never, in this time, and space, okay, get into every single detail of the eternal subsistence of Logos with Theos. That is an impossibility. I want to bring that out. Okay? That's why it's so disrespectful to call Jesus, okay, he wasn't Jesus at the time, but he was Logos, okay? Or Logos. It is so disrespectful to call him a God with some sort of limitation. First of all, there's no limitation attached to Logos or logos. There's a there's a there's a genitive attached to uh, 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 Satan, as Hathaas. He is a limited god. Only he is only the god of this age. Of this age is in a genitive case construction. There is no genitive case construction describing okay Jesus or logos in that way. That he's a restricted god, a demigod. And that's why it's so disrespectful for the JWs, knowing the Bible as they do, okay, uh, to uh, put Jesus into that category of, you know, Apollo 
or uh, Mars or Jupiter or whatever the case may be, Hercules or Zeus or any of the other demigods that are restricted to a particular, quote, territory, end quote, like Julius R. Manti uh, said that the witnesses are doing when they do that, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> the eternal subsistence of God is staggering. We can't miss logos and theos because of the trees. What are the trees? Well, the full Greek construction. The full Greek construction is meant to bring us to that understanding, okay? As exegetically speaking and expositionary speaking, okay? I hope I said that right. I'm, forget I'm forgetting my, my English here in the Philippines, guys. It's ridiculous. When we deal with exposition and exegesis, and the word exegesis comes from uh, the Greek word found and recorded in verse 18 of this, of this prologue, okay? Exegesata. Uh, when it comes to the eternal subsistence of Logos with Theos, it is absolutely mind-boggling because we look at our bodies, okay? And we see that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139. So when you look at the intricacy of the eye, just of the eye. And I remember a study done of the eye, according to uh, America, uh, let me see, uh, Associates for Biblical Research, an archaeological uh, uh, ministry, based ministry. And I forgot the teacher of that, but he was, uh, he was speaking eloquence of the, just the human eye. Forget about everything else. Just the human eye. I held, me, Angelo, okay, I held a human brain and a human... Uh, uh, pelvis and uh, a human set of lungs and uh, and a human heart in my hand. Not at the same time. Okay, they're much too big, especially the pelvis and the lungs. I was working next to uh, Body's exhibition in Dialogue in the Dark, and then I went to the touch booth of these things because they had bodies uh, on display from China in the exhibition. Uh, That's part of a premier exhibition. The same company that paid me uh, for my job. Okay, and, and I held these things. Not just to mention those things, and the pelvis is as big as a car seat for a child, okay? It is absolutely mind-boggling mind when you're talking about just the, the, the intricacies of the eye. Okay? Imagine the, intric the intricacies of God, the living God of Israel. But yet... When, we're, when you're talking about God, you're talking about an uncreated being. And yet he is the most intricate, okay, being subsisting. But yet he wasn't created. For us, we, we say, well, you know, somebody had to make us because we're so fearfully and wonderfully made. But somebody had to make uh, all the structure and all these things and the way that the blood circulates and, and uh, the way that things travel from one point to another in the human body. The human soma, you know what I'm saying? Soma, uh, Greek of is Greek for body. See, uh, basar, okay, in Hebrew. How many of trillions and trillions and zillions of years has Logos subsisted with Theos? None before the other. Jesus never said why he was here or even uh, before that time. Protos mu. The father was protos mu, before me. That's what John the Baptist said about him and Jesus. That Jesus was before John the Baptist. That's what John the Baptist said. Protos mu around, you know, verse 15 of this prologue. Chapter 1 of the Gospel of But Jesus never said those words concerning him and the father. Protos mu. Say that to the witnesses. That is never recorded in the Bible. You know what I mean? A Petron, a Metron. No father, no mother. That's just the deal. Trillions and zillions and gazillions, or whatever the case may be, years. And at one point during that. I hate to say time. Jesus said on the cross, Tetelestai, the debt has been paid 
in full. And we preachers are putting the word debt there according to everything else in the Bible. Reduplicating consonant, tau, okay? That tau reduplicated and was connected by a connecting vowel to the other tau. And thus you get the perfect tense. Any other clues are indicating the perfect tense also, the stem, and whatever the case may be, the personal ending. It has been finished. And it came to that point. First of all, to make man, okay, all right, and creating the way of salvation for man, even before the foundation of the wall, we were chosen in him. But this is absolutely, this is the full Greek construction, but let's not miss all of these things. Because of the full Greek construction, guys, we could talk about the, you know, about the, the the finite verb here and the, the nominative case and the dative case and the and the and the accusative case the ca the case of uh, limitation and the uh, you know the 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 prepositions uh, you know pointing out a relationship between two set of words or whatever the case may be theos in the predicate position in John one one c which I officially call the sincere injection because if you're born again you're gonna believe in the deity of Christ and you're you're a damn shit you're not gonna believe. That's just all there is to it. So that's why the witnesses in Islam and all the people like that, including the Mormon church, don't believe in the deity of Christ and not even the humanity of Christ sometimes, these cults and sects, because they don't have the dunatai, they don't have the ability to call Jesus the Lord. And I'm saying Lord in the sense of Yahweh or Yahweh. They can't. They don't have the dunatai. They don't have the ability. And that, that's told, uh, that's, uh, told in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, verses around 3 of 4. The people don't have the dunatai to call Jesus Lord. That's, the, that's why they don't believe in John 1, 1, C and all its glory. Zillions and zillions and zillions and hundreds of zillions of years has God subsisted. With God. That's where I said it. One God, but God subsisting with God. Yahweh existing with Yahweh, but yet one Yahweh. Yet two persons are mentioned. Yeah. How many hundreds of years have they been together? We just don't know. There's no beginning nor end. Even though Alpha and Omega is called the beginning and the end. So you can't complain which wine and squeal about Logos or Jesus being called a beginning because Alpha and Omega is called the beginning. And we all know that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Incidentally, that was a true uh, uh, last letter of the, uh, of, uh, well, there is one, what now? But there was another, let's put it like that, another uh, letter, uh, part of the Greek alphabet that was actually the last letter in the Greek alphabet, parakisma, parakisma, and it had to do with pregnancy. It was dropped off. Okay. So that's why John uses Omega, because Parakisma wasn't the last letter anymore in the Greek alphabet. Thank God he did. Zillions and zillions and gazillions of years. Multiply that by infinity. And Logos was with Theos. Bereshit hayahadabar, vahadabar hayahim. Ha Elohim, wa Elohim, ha That's the Hebrew way of saying John 1 1. In a nutshell, the subsistence of God is absolutely mind boggling and, ast and astonishing. Wrap your puny mind on that. The eternal subsistence of. of Logos or Logos with Theos. Energy in or Logos. Que o Logos in Proston Theon. Que Theos in or Logos. Can you think about that just for a second? Before we get into full Greek construction, which is a piece of cake compared to that. Ekenos. 
I mean, we can only touch the outer hem of the garment, and he didn't have a garment at the time of Logos. I know I'm switching from Logos to Theos, or, you know, like uh, Logos and Theos. I mean, Logos and uh, Lagos and, and Theos and, and Theos. And that's just the fun way of putting it now. That's just to make everybody happy. So my, well, my commentary uh, board won't be so full. But our minds get very easily full when we think of this. Logos. Prostonteon. Energy in our logos. Que o logos. Y prostonteon. Que theos. Y no logos. The eternal subsistence of logos with theos. Is mind boggling to the ultimate degree. And we pick up the Bible like, uh, you know, oh, let's just study the, Bi the Bible. This is the most amazing book in antiquity. And it speaks about the eternal subsistence of Lagos, number one, number two. The intercommunion slash relationship between these, this Lagos and, and Theos, number two, number three. The nature slash essence of Lagos. Well, let's get into it. Now that we just talked about being on the sand, let's go to the beach. Water itself. Let's let's let's, let's dive right in and see that this logos subsisted in the form of God. Has and Marfete Uhuparkun. Who being in the form of God? Who being in very nature? God says the NIV. Nature one or nature A. And when he took an additional Naya, it wasn't the subtraction of deity, it was the addition of humanity. This Logos became a genita. Shakes. Became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Well, let's get at it, guys. The full Greek construction. Let's talk about the Greek. I mean, it's just, is 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 absolutely, you have to put it in that way, guys. Sometimes, oh, I know John 1, 1, I, I know. It's just like if we have wives, they'll say to us, you know, I mean, you know, oh, I know John 1, 1, I know, I know. Actually, guinea in Greek, wife or, or woman, you understand what I'm saying? Now, that's, the, that's the pronunciation, guys. Gini. That's just her deal. Oh, I know John want one. <laughs> uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Uh, uh, what else? Ah, uh, the same was uh, with, with God in the beginning. What else? Hapatati atua geneta. Chai chores atua geneta. Ha hen ude ha hen giganes. What's that? Okay, that's what we're trying to teach them. Is that what I'm saying? Verse 3. Oh, I didn't go that far. Okay, so I mean, you know. You didn't even start, you didn't even begin. No pun intended, begin, get it? <laughs> you didn't even pick up the Bible yet. It's like you never picked it up before. Even if you read John 1 1, it's like you never picked it up. It's like you almost never read the Bible. Sometimes we read it. All right, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, let me have my lunch. A feast on this. Energy. What's that? Well, let's look at the construction, though. Now, first of all, the word arche is in the feminine dative, okay, singular construction. Okay, it's a feminine word. Arche, and you know the paradigm. You can even make it up yourself, okay, if you know the rules. It's very regular. So, arche, arche, so arche with a Yoda subscript and arche. 
that's the that's the paradigm in the in the in the singular. And as a matter of fact, our chas is in the plural, and that's found and recorded for Jesus doing all his created stuff in the beginnings. In the plural. Beginnings. They record it in the same verse that the Father calls Jesus Yahweh. Verse 10 of chapter 1 of Hebrews. But the Jehovah's Witness will tell me before we get into NRG, uh, yeah, but, but, you know, uh, verse 9 says that he has a God. How about that? Well, yeah, I accept, I, I, I accept the cheese. I accept the meat. But you don't accept the buns. You don't accept verse 8 and, and 10. We accept the whole divine sandwich. Because we like to eat in our side of the camp. We're not like you, who used to be like my brother, that when he was given a hot dog or whatever the case may be, he hid it under the bed. No, no. We're not like that. You throw the bread away and all you want the meat. We want all of the sloppy joe. We want everything, including the meat. And he has a God according to servanthood. Read Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8. My servant the branch. There you go. That's the answer to that one. That's how he has a God. Because he served God. You understand what I'm saying? My servant the branch. And don't give me this mumble jumbo, okay? That he had a God before the New Testament. Because Micah chapter 5, verse 3 in the Greek Septuagint says the Setai, okay? That's in the future tense. You see the, you know, the future tense stem, okay? All right? Stay. I know the a eta lengthen probably the epsilon there. And then the sigma is the future tense formative, okay? And then you have the connecting vowel, epsilon, I believe, and from the tie, stesetai, he will stand, he will rise. You get the he from the context, not the verb. So that's for the future, as not for now, meaning at the time of uh, Micah. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, not for then. Better luck next time in the tower. But we don't expect too much from you. Your, your, your founder, your first daddy, he only went to the seventh grade. Sometimes I get confused with that and I say he went to the second grade, confusing him with Joseph Smith, who only went to the second grade in the Mormon church. I mean, we just have to find another daddy of yours, you know, and put that right in the middle, and that's the sandwich on the other side. The second grade to the seventh, find another cult that only went to the fifth. Hey, gal. Second grade, seventh grade, only had a ninth grade education. The first, the first, you know, the first two founders of their respected cults. Put, uh, you know, uh, what's his cult? What's his name? Jim Jones in there, who never went to school. All right, maybe you could put him in the middle. It's the hot dog he was. Leading 942 members of his followers. That's straight to hell. I don't know why people are not happy with Jesus being their leader and their follower. And they have to follow people like that. Jonestown. Energy. That phrase is found a few times in the, in, the, in the Greek New Testament. You find it right here and then right in verse 2. I was trying to, for the longest time, I was saying, well, you know, Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 talks about enarche. You see it in the Greek, sometimes not in the English translations in the beginning. Like, you know, the begin in the beginning, you, know, you don't see it like that. You look at it, you look at it, you, you, um, you can see that construction, enarche. Okay, in the Greek, of Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. And I'm saying, well, that's two, but where's the other one? And it's right here, in front of my face. Verse 2 says, okay, hutas en enarche prostantean. End quote. And I was talking to a, a witness. And we don't look at the full Greek construction. I'm going to keep on. And I was talking to Mark from Missouri, who, who lives in a Republican state, for God's sakes. Okay. We'll forgive him for that, but goodness gracious, Missouri. And my wife, you know, is a wonderful uh, wife, and she and she doesn't speak English like we do back in the States, you know. And so uh, and so she says, oh, Mark from Missouri instead of Missouri. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm saying. 
And he said, well, they, there's not another verse in the Bible like John 1, 1, end quote. And then I said, did you ever read verse 2? Now, I know that verse 2 is repeated almost for a different reason. It is meant to, to speak about that the Father was in the beginning also. Verse um, 1c and verse 2 actually helps us out to not get things mixed up. And the end of verse 3, by the way. The, you know, brilliantly. Like, it's just like... It's like, it's like God is showing his genius. We talk about the genius of the church of case and the genius of the Attica. What about the genius of God? Who spoke, you know, who spoke Hebrew through the through the prophets and 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 and, and I taught them how to write, you know, when he said that the nations were gonna be, you know, destroyed and they were gonna go like down a drain. Gluck, 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 says someone, you understand what I'm saying? The genius of God putting words together. I'm gonna put the nations down the drain and I'm gonna give you some Hebrew words to prove it. Cluck, cluck, cluck. I mean, I'm gonna use liquid Drano on these nations to put them down the drain, put them down the tubes. Alright. And I'll see no logos que o logos in prostonte on que tios is no logos. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So that's just the deal. So the Kai turns into K in the modern uh, sense of it all, you know. They love the A, E, and O sound in modern Greek. They don't love really too much the O, you know. The I and the, you know, the I and the, and the, and the you know what I'm saying? I think the O changed to E, and the A changed to E like that. They love that. The Greeks. All right, now, so NRK is found a few times in the Greek New Testament, maybe three or four times. And so, what are we, what are we to do with this NRK? Well, N is a preposition, okay, and it's found and recorded. I mean, you know, I'm, doing, I'm recording, I'm recording something, Godfrey. What do you want? What? Well, go get it. How many, how many, what, what do you want? How many pampers? One pamper? Get the pamper up there, okay? And then two milks, get it in there in the, in the box, okay? Sorry about that, guys. I don't want to pause because the last time I paused, I stopped the show. <laughs> Give me the milk, Godfrey. That's my stepson. Let me have the milk, my love. Go on. Let me rip these apart here. Watch, watch it. Don't touch my phone. I'm doing a Bible study. Don't touch it. Yeah, that's Greek, my love. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Here, take the milk and the pan. You got the pamper? No. Okay, now, now, shoo. Come on, love you a lot. Come on. And go this way, go this way, Godfrey, this way. Come on, hurry up, I'm doing a study. Come on. Put that back, put this milk back over there in the box. Come on. Open up the lid. Put it in the box. Open up the door. And I'm throwing you out like Ralph Crandon does. Come on, out you go. Love you. All right. Love it. Ah, kids. His name is Godfrey because he was born on Good Friday. Okay, <laughs> can't beat that, guys. And one of, and my other children. I mean, you know, Anna Devane is the 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 name of my daughter, and Sean Donnelly is the name of my son. God willing, he'll be born like around June. Is is April now? So I, I put Sean Donnelly as the name of, uh, as the boy because I, you know, I was a very, I was a, uh, I'm a very great admirer of Anna Devane and uh, and Sean Donnelly from the WSB and General Hospital of all the things, you know. That's just the deal. All I need is Robert Scorpio, and I'll be said I can't lose. <laughs> okay, you know, say what I said. That's just the deal. Well, anyway, let's get back to this. So NRG. Or in, in a modern way of saying it, anarchy. Well, let's look at the preposition. Now, when you look at an older manual, a manual grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dana and Manny, and I know some things have to be changed. I understand that. Okay, I know that punctiliar has to be changed. And so, 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 so let's do it. Okay? Let's, 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 I mean, let's do that better. 
and bigger and bolder. I mean, you know, that's a great manual. Okay, you don't want, you know, the Daniels, uh, the, 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 you know, the manuals, I should say, of Dan Wallace and Bill Mounts to be thrown away just because they made some mistakes that we don't know about now, some discoveries that will be done like 50 years from now, and then you're not even looking at their manuals anymore. That will be a shame. Okay? I wish I could get this brighter and brighter. <clears throat> no pun intended, guys. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Now, let's look at it. Now, let's look at the, how to read it first, okay? Well, the E is easy. Okay, Epsilon. Now, that's a very important letter in Greek, okay? Let's just stay with the E for a second, though, okay, in this preposition N. And there's about 17 small prepositions found and recorded in, in, in the Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament by Manti and uh, Dana again. And incidentally, the, the whole interview, uh, two big chunks of it, are found and, re are found and recorded in, 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 on YouTube. Okay, Walter Martin interviewing uh, Julius Armanti, um, the famous Greek scholar, who went to be with the Lord, you know, several years ago. Okay? And so, what do you want, Godfrey? What do you want? Godfrey, come over here immediately. Come here. Okay, sit down over here. Okay, what's that? Okay, so get whatever you need and get it because I'm doing a study, okay? So when I'm studying the Bible, I don't want any interruptions. Is that clear? Okay, so bring that to your mama and, and you know, what else you need? That's it. So uh, no, no more interruptions, please. Come on. Thank you. I mean, you know, I mean, I can't have this. You know, Martin Lawrence Jones didn't like to be interrupted, guys. You know, he didn't like to be interrupted at all. I mean, you know, well, I'm going to lay down the groundwork right now. He did in his preaching uh, series, which is which was impeccable. I mean, I never heard anything like that in my life. You know, preaching what what sermons is all about. I mean, that's incredible. Just check that out, guys. So let's let's, you know, let's take the the interruptions and make perfume out of them. You know what I mean? Because I never would have brought that up, but the, the preaching, uh, the actual lectures, actually, of, of how to make a sermon, how to preach by Martin Lloyd-Jones, check that out on, uh, on uh, YouTube. It's, they're there, actually. So, I was trying to say that Epsilon is a very, very important uh, Greek letter. Okay, Epsilon. And so, um, that could be used as a connecting vowel. Okay, when two letters, when a letter reduplicates, okay, like to tell us, like I said before, that, that you know, uh, it has been finished. Well, that's an epsilon in the middle of those two T's there. And this also could be, um, you know, a, uh, a, uh, uh, a letter that connects the personal ending uh, to the verb also, okay? So uh, that could be that could be uh, that could be used. The epsilon could be used for that also, and to showcase the 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 imperfect tense uh, in the beginning of the ver a verb, a verb, and uh, um, the aorist tense. So this 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 epsilon uh, letter is a very important letter, okay, in Greek. It could also show you that something is an evocative, okay, that. Uh, Someone is being addressed, like kurie, thee. Okay, so you put that, you put a, you can put an epsilon there. So anyway, I'm just saying that this this epsilon is a very important uh, letter in Greek, and it should be taught like that right off the bat. So if you you teach it right off the bat to be like that, that it can that can you know lengthen to an eta, that could change, they could it could morph, it could change, it could be dropped off altogether. Okay. I mean, then when you get to these uh, different constructions, uh, particularly in the verb uh, system, the verbal system, then, you, then you're not going to get so confused because you already know it all offhand that this epsilon is absolutely crucial, crucial uh, to, to understand Greek and how it's, how it's uh, put together. All right, so anyway, epsilon is the, the first letter here, and all of these letters have a meaning, okay? Every single word. Incidentally, theta, now they call called theta, the first letter in the word for God, 
in and of itself it means divine. Now I'm not saying that Tomas is a divine being because he has the Veta attached to him as the first letter, okay? But I'm just saying that in and of itself it means divine. So it's a very special letter in Greek. Nowadays it's called Fita, but we call it Veta. Now anyway, so Epsilon and Nu is the spelling here. Now the Nu, the N, the Greek N, when it's not capitalized, it looks like a V, but it's not a V. There is no V, according to Biblical Greek, okay? There is a V in Hebrew, okay? It's, it's you know, the, the bit. That could be a B or a V sound, okay? That can make a B or a V sound, B or V, like in the word Bivakasha. Um, there is a V according to uh, modern Greek because the beta is called Vita, actually. So, they're, 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 you know, that, that can be a B or a V in modern Greek, but in biblical Greek, there is no V, okay? And in Hebrew, there, there are a couple of V uh, sounding letters. I mean, you could, you could have the, the wow, um, or, you know, um, uh, pronounced also vav, that could be a V also. Just take your pick between the bait and the wow, or, you know. Now, um, so, it looks like it says ev, right? But it's not ev. I'm right after the one. Remember that you read Greek from left to right, never from right to left, unless you're breaking, breaking up the word, okay? You're looking, you're taking it apart to look at, uh, you know, to look at the, um, the parts of it, the individual parts. Okay? And believe me, you have to do what that with participles. Okay, a verb, a verb, okay, and a, and a verb structure and, an, and, a, and a noun structure at the same time blended together. So N is a preposition like meta, hupa, para, pras, Pra, ek, anti, ana, peri, kata. I mean, all these prepositions. Okay? Um, and more. Um, sh a preposition shows you the relationship that two words have together. Is pointing out N is, okay? We say N in English. We say N in Spanish also. In Hebrew is be, okay? Be reshit means in beginning. Now, I know the tau can be pronounced into, a, into other sounds, but, you know, be reshit. Incidentally, this anarche is found and recorded in the Greek Septuagint. Let's look at it for a second. Let's get a copy of the Greek Septuagint from the phone here, okay? And let's just, and let's just see how it, how it rolls. I have Genesis 1, 1 verse 1, okay, Genesis, not looking at the diacritics though, but I'll just pronounce it like that, Genesis, okay, Behreshit in Hebrew, Aleph, Aleph, okay, 1, 1, it says over, over here, in our he, epoyas in hathe as tan uranan kaitain gain, in our he, Epoyasin hate as tan uranan kai tain gain. Enarche epoyasin hate as tan uranan kai tain gain. Incidentally, has the word invisible in verse what? In verse 3? Well, that word is never accompanied with parousia anywhere in the Bible. Okay? An invisible coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may want to tell that. Give that uh, information to the witnesses. The parousia, okay, uh, it is found uh, several times in the Greek New Testament, and it, and it does mean presence also, okay. I don't know why Bill Setnar said that. Well, uh, Charles Chase Russell and another uh, person was studying Greek, and then they come up and they came up, came up with a with a meaning for parousia presence. Well, that's not true. It does mean presence, and even Manti says that also in his interview. Okay, it does mean presence, or you see vines, it does mean presence or coming. Okay, presence is a much more like prolonged stay, you know, than just coming. 
Okay? So it does mean presence or coming. So, but the, that word never is accompanied with, uh, with um, invisible. Okay, Aratas. So I think it's the the word for invisible. Okay, in this text here, let me see if I can find it though. And I know I'm jumping sometimes, but you know, uh, and it's right. It's the, actually the uh, the third Greek or uh, the fourth Greek word. Let me see. One, two, three, four. The fifth Greek word in verse two. A a ra. Tas. And that's in the genitive, though. That's in the genitive case construction. Aaratas. Okay? So, Alpha Omicron, now they called Omicron, Omicron Rho. Alpha Tau, now they called Tough. Omicron Final Sigma. Aaratas, that word for invisible, never appears with parousia for Jesus coming back. So, this idea that the sign of the Son of Man says around page 2, around 1974, in uh, the Watchtower uh, magazine or whatever you want to call it, and that Jesus was going to come invisibly. Well, again, this word doesn't appear with parousia anywhere in the Bible together. Okay. Now let's get back to the to the to the task at hand. And okay, okay. Does and let's, let me go back to um. Let me go back to our text here. Okay. Does this energy refer back to Genesis? Some people teach that that's what it's doing. Now, I, I don't have any reason to argue that, that point, okay? Well, this is a sort of horizon. It's not limiting the subsistence of Logos to that point only, okay? Uh, you know, it, it's it's like a horizon. Actually, you know that logos is in you know on. Yeah, actually, uh, you could put logos before you know, right at that time. Okay, of creation, creating. Okay, he is the intermediate agent of creation, according to the passive voice with intermediate uh, agent. One of the uses of the passive voice in the Manu grammar in the Greek New Testament by Ma uh, Dana and Manti again. The passive voice with uh, direct agent, okay, uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 30, around there. The passive voice with impersonal agent, see Ephesians chapter 2, around verses 8 and 9, you know. And then the passive voice with, with intermediate agent, that actually uh, Logos did create things. And we see that the Father says that he did with his own hands, meaning that the Son, who he wasn't the Son at the time, but that, that the Son did create things, okay, all right, with his own hands. You see that recorded there in verse 10 of chapter 1 of Hebrews and all the way back to Psalm 102. Incidentally, where the Tetragrammaton appears nine times, okay, in that text, in that Psalm, El being found one time for God in the singular, El, right, Allah for the Sere, and then the Lamed, Okay, uh, letter capping off the syllable. Now, um, does it refer to back? That back to that? Okay, I think it does, but I I think that what this is trying to do, and Arche in Halagas is trying to go back to Genesis, but see the contrast between the two verses. First of all. Okay, it says over there in uh, Genesis 1 1, okay, and arche e poes in hafe as tan uranan kai tain gain. Okay, in the beginning, okay, God created, and the word created is in the aorist tense over here, okay, e poesin, okay, e poesin, uh, e p o i e s e n, e poesin, and uh, from poeo. Okay, not that it comes from that, not that you built upon that, right? But poieo um, is the uh, present indicative form, it's a lexical form, poieo, I make or I do, or whatever the case may be. Incidentally, okay, um, incidentally, just because it says that he made him both Lord and Christ, uh, and it's the same Greek word found over there, epoiesen, it doesn't mean that he created him both Lord and Christ. He makes him, okay, to be uh, Christ by anointing him. Uh, same book, Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. And then, uh, to prove that poeo could be used in different ways, okay, not necessarily to create, 
Well, find um, uh, the Jews saying that he he made him you for you make yourself out to be God. Well, he wasn't creating himself to be God. He was proclaiming himself to be God. And you see that in verse 33 of chapter 10 of John's gospel. So the Greek word poeo could be used in other different ways. I mean, you know, men made other men kings, okay, in the book of Kings. And then if we say that we have no sin, we make, same Greek word poeo, we make God a liar. Now we're not putting God into a test tube and creating him from scratch, okay? All right? We're just making him out to be a liar. He said one thing, and we're saying that he does something else. Okay? Or actually, you know, we, we or, you know, we, he says one thing, that we are, you know, we're sinners, and then we're saying we're not sinners, so we're making him out to be a liar. You know what I'm saying? So you see how we make, our, uh, we make God to be a liar. Make? That doesn't mean we create God to be a liar. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... But this construction, the gist of it, the meat and potatoes of it, is not in, in John chapter 1, verse 1. In other words, the Greek word epoiosin is not there in the text. It doesn't say in John 1, 1. You understand what I'm saying? Anarche epoiosin hathe as tam lagan, end quote, anywhere there. That's one of the best case scenarios for the Jehovah's Witnesses that I um, uh, manufactured because I couldn't do it from the Bible. So I had to actually help out uh, the witnesses. You know what I mean? You can't find that anywhere in the Bible. Uh, I mean, not, not even the idea of Logos or Logos being a creature. It doesn't even say in Archeaginata Ha Logos. In the beginning, the word uh, became, or the word emerged, or the word came into being. It doesn't even have that. It doesn't even say, in 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 the beginning was the sun. I could deal with that. It doesn't even say, in It doesn't even say, in um, In In the beginning was the, uh, was, the, was the angel. I could deal with that a little bit, just a little bit, because doesn't um, the Apostle Paul... And the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians in Hebrew, in the Hebrew New Testament, translated from the text of receptors, it calls himself, doesn't the Apostle Paul call him, calls himself Malach? Doesn't he call himself Malach there in Ephesim 1.1? The, the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 in the Hebrew New Testament, translated uh, by Gigi Collier and T. Frey way back in uh, 1817, incidentally it has there in uh, John chapter 8 verse 58, it has there Jesus saying, Ech, yech, for himself. And nobody can say that except for God alone. You love that word alone, don't you? You went to tower. And incidentally, the 1880 edition of the Hebrew New Testament has the same construction, but in the emphatic, Ani, I am. An ex-Jehovah's Witness, Ted Denter, brought that out in his book entitled Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses around page 153 way back in 1979 you understand what I mean? that's the name of the book Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses you understand what I'm saying? maybe you could you could download it uh, from uh, from Google you know you could download any, anything even how to make cupcakes you could download the, the, the recipe alright and I hey in ha logos. It doesn't say in the beginning God created the logos. And the best case scenario for Jehovah's Witnesses, I had to put a K R I logos in the accusative of case construction because he'll be, uh, he'll be the he'll be the object of the verb, the object of God's creation. In that scenario, for the witnesses. And at a poyas and hafe as tam lagan doesn't appear near the Bible. Only appears in the tower. It doesn't appear here. And that's what I care about. I don't care what the tower says. I don't care what Islam says. I don't care what the Catholic Church says. I don't care what the Mormon Church says. I don't care. I care what this says. This. Because I have children. I have children to feed. You know what I'm saying? And I can't feed them. You know. The fat that is fed is given in the tower. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes fat is good, but it's not good all the time, though. 
This is say in our key, a poetess in a poetess in half a ass time like God. Does it say that? Now, like I said before, the Greek preposition N spelled out epsilon and nu. Nowadays called ni. It's an N in Greek. The N in Hebrew is actually noon. N O O N, like good afternoon. And it looks like a, you know, when it's not final noon, it, it looks like a telephone on a payphone, old fashioned payphone. Okay. Is <laughs> that what I mean? Uh, this, this look, unfortunately, this looks like a, a letter in English, a V, but there's it's, it's no V-looking letter in Greek that does a V. So just pronounce this N. Always pronounce this V-looking letter as an N, okay? And you'll be just fine. N, now spelled out Epsilon with the soft breathing marker, and it's capitalized the Epsilon. So the soft breathing marker will go, sorry about that, guys, will go, okay, in front I, well, you know, um, I hate to say in front, though, but before. I hate to say in front because in front is in front. In front is like you're re directly right in front of it. Okay, I mean, I'm just, I, I guess I'm being too picky, but I mean, just, just, you know, it's like a, a dot is right in front, okay, right in the middle, okay, of the, of the, uh, you know, as a doubling doggish for a Hebrew consonant or, or a hardening doggish. I mean, it's right in the middle. I guess you could use the word front, I guess. You know. You could say before. But anyway. So the rough breathing marker is not here. Or it would have been hen. That's a completely different word. You see how the, how the absence of the H or the presence of the H sound can change, okay, this construction. Okay. Because hen means one in Greek. Okay. Actually, a chad is found and recorded around verse 30 of chapter 10 of the Gospel of Kata Yohanin, uh, you know, Yachoran in, in Hebrew. So we have hen in John chapter 10 when Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Do you know what he said in Hebrew? Actually, in the Hebrew New Testament, he said, I and the Av, Father, are echad. I and the Father are echad. That's why they wanted to kill Jesus. If he was speaking Hebrew, he was saying Echad. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. I mean, if he was speaking Aramaic or Hebrew, I mean, he this is the stuff is so much more colorful what Jesus said. As a matter of fact, it doesn't say Ego Emi Ho On in our Greek Bibles because he probably was speaking directly from the Hebrew. He was quoting directly from the Hebrew. Eh, yeah. That's why it doesn't say Ego Emi Ho On. That's a translation uh, by the uh, Greek Septuagint translators way back in the 3rd century, 2nd uh, century B.C. They translated like that. But if he was quoting for the Hebrew, all he had to do was say and then <laughs> that's just a deal. So anyway, Epsilon is, looks like a capital E, so that's kind of that's nice for us English-speaking people. And uh, again, the N looks like a little tiny V, but it's but it's an N in Greek, so that's that's it with that N. It's a preposition, and it's showing you the relationship that Logos has with beginning. That he wasn't over the beginning, he wasn't under the beginning, he was alongside the beginning, he was in the beginning. Okay, but you can't bracket him like that because he was before the beginning. Okay, he was, he was, in other words, you know, when you look at the whole entire Bible, I mean, it, it says that he subsisted in the form of God. And it, say, it doesn't say he came into being. Hubarchon is the, is the Greek word there, is in the participial construction, okay, same as Labon in the verse 7 of chapter 2 of Philippians. And the difference from that is that he subsisted or he was subsisting, subsisting in the nature of God. But he took, you know, take, he uses taking there, uh, taking the form of a slave. That proves to me that at the time of the writing Philippians of Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7, he was God. He was still God and he was still man. As a present active, you know, a participle. 
the Omega and the New are showing the participial construction along with everything else. You know what I'm saying? Now, he was in the beginning. Oh, but Proverbs says that he was brought forth. Yeah, really? You're, you're saying that Logos here, which is a masculine uh, singular uh, nominative construction, you're saying that he's feminine? It says over there in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, okay, she, she, and her. Oh, but I'm tracing the word for, you know, uh, you know, you guys say uh, she calls or she cries or whatever the case may be, and I just see the, the Hebrew word call. I don't see she anywhere in the text. Do you know how to read Hebrew? So how, how, how do you change ish to isha? Making, you know, how, how do you say man in, in Hebrew? One of the words for man anyway, you know, ish and adam, I understand that, ish. But how do you change ish to feminine? You add a hey, isha, making it into a feminine construction. It's, a, it's the same way for call. You add a hey toward the end of the word there, okay, that verb, and you, you're putting it into the feminine construction. So it's not cola, it's cola in the text of, of Proverbs chapter 8. Like Coca-Cola, that means, you know, um, and I mean, let's check it out, though. Let's check that out for a second. Now, I understand, okay, that, and then let's get Proverbs out over here, uh, Proverbs uh, from this app here, because it shows you the whole breakdown, okay, you understand? Now, I understand that, um, you know, when you, when you put... Uh, you, you have to be careful translating, okay, um, Logos into several languages because you might convey that Logos is feminine because their word for word is in the feminine in some languages. So you have to be careful with that. And you, and you check that out. And uh, handbook translation of the Gospel of John. And, you know, you might have to be careful with your translation there. You could put Jesus, uh, uh, in the beginning was Jesus, and then thou, thou, you know, thou help out the situation instead of saying, in the beginning was the word, because the word, word, in some languages, is in the feminine, is, is, is feminine. Now, let's get Proverbs, okay, because, you know, let's this, this just settle the issue here, okay? Because you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to use... Oh, were you trying to tell me that, that, that about the eternal subsisting of Logos? I mean, he came into being. And Proverbs chapter 8 actually says that. Doesn't it, though, Ange? Well, it doesn't. Well, let's look at the Hebrew here, okay? Now, I want to look at the word cola, like Coca-Cola. You understand what I'm saying? And as a, we'll get that in our minds. Uh, it says over here, does not. Now, why does it? Let me see. This. Let me. Let me do something like this, guys. So I won't do that. Okay. Uh, let me see. Wait for a second. Um. So it won't tilt like that. You know, that's very annoying. You know. Okay. So let's take that out of the equation. Okay. Let me get this back. Okay. I hope it doesn't disappear on us. Okay. So it shouldn't tilt. It says, does not wisdom, Sophia in Greek, okay, Sophia, does not wisdom cry out, okay, let's check this out, okay, cry out, and that's a, that's a, that's a feminine over there, okay, also the cry out, let's see, I'll check that out, no, and this it says over here, um, understanding and understanding lift up, it says over here, here lift up okay her voice okay and this is what i want to show you i hope i can do this i hope i can poke the bear here okay let's get this this is a settle the issue verse one now check this out now it says over here her voice oh wait a minute it's not logos logos is not a her that's a man. Listen, Logos, the, the paradigm for Logos is, okay, the inflection, all the inflectional forms are, okay, Logos, Lagu, Lago, Lagan, Lagoi, Lagon, Lagois, Lagus. Logos is an nominative singular masculine construction. It's the subject of the sentence or the subject of the verb, okay? The word was is showing you the status of Logos or Logos, 
We are we're so used to the status of our status. What's our status on Facebook? Well, the status of Logos was that he was subsisting for zillions of years without a beginning. Let's get back to this though. I mean, you can't. The Jehovah's Witnesses can't use this, 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 this. Well, they actually use verse thirty of this book. Okay, that I was brought forth. Well, first of all, this is poetic language. You know, Proverbs, uh, Job, the Psalms, Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon. That's poetry. That's poetry. This is poetry in motion. This is this is this is this is not. Teaching, okay, meaning verse 30, about that Logos was a creature, that he was brought forth. This is, this is, this is poet, poetic structures. This is poetry. You ever heard of poetry? I mean, Edgar Allan Poe? I mean, come on. Poetry. That's what it is. Let's look at it, though. It says over here, her voice. Does it say his voice? Oh, but Solomon, I mean, you know, just in his name, had a feminine, you know, just, come on, stop, though. Stop, stop reaching. It's just like the words cut off being used by the Jehovah's Witnesses to, to translate, uh, you know, uh, uh, Colossian from Colossus there in, uh, in uh, what? Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. Stop it. Stop reaching. Oh, memorial tombs. So they put two words because it can mean memorial or tomb or whatever the case may be. And as, so they put, to, to teach what they want to teach, they put memorial tombs. Well, to try to teach that Jesus isn't really alive now, so we have to put union in, in, in the beginning of the prepositional phrase found and recorded in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. So they put in union with Christ. It's not a genitive relationship there or something like that, that you need to insert the word son to, to make it sound, you know, palatable, okay? Jesus, the Mary in Greek, and then you can't have it like that. So you have to put the word son in there, Jesus, the son of Mary and his dad. That's necessary. Not necessary to put union, okay, in the middle of that prepositional phrase. All right. So what is this? Well, it says her voice. That's not, that's not Lagos. Let's check out the construction. It says over here, coal. Actually, cola. You see what I'm saying? Cola. That's a deal. <clears throat> now let's check out the Hebrew the Hebrew construction in the text the textual form. And let's check out the lexical form. Now, before I say something about this, okay, I have to mention this. One day I was talking to Tony from Florida because you know that I have a ministry, so you know, our people used to call me from time to time, not anymore because I'm in the Philippines now, I'm not in the States. Okay, the United States that is. So I relocated from the United States, you know, around three years ago in 2018. It's 2022 right now, but it's not October yet, you know. I left October 26th exactly that date. I left, uh, I left the United States of America. Touched down, okay, around the 28th of October. Spending 15 hours on the first plane and 50 hour, 15 hours in China. Only to take another airplane of four hours and to take uh, 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 a car, uh, you know... Um, Three hours. For three hours. You understand what I mean? All right. Now, over here it says her voice. Now, let's check it out. Now, but before, like I said before, I was going to say something now. Now, I was talking to Tony from Florida, Jehovah's Witness. I hope he's not one now. I mean, he, you know, he said that he has kids and he doesn't want to be deceived. And, you know, he has a trouble with the tower uh, uh, teaching on the 144,000 because almost all of them are all dead. So he said this, if, if, if that prophecy fails, which it already did, okay, all right, he said, quote, I'm going to become an atheist, end quote. You see, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses have nothing to fall back on. That's the problem. They put all their eggs in one basket, and when I don't have the eggs, and when I don't have the eggs in the basket, they have nothing. They have olive, zero. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying. 
Uh, so he said, well, wait a minute. Um, let's study what you're saying. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at a Proverbs chapter uh, 8. Uh, but I only see the word um, voice here, Angelo. I don't see the word her voice. Where are you getting the her voice? Well, I'm using the N.I. And, and at that time, I didn't know he wrote. That's what forced me to buy a Hebrew Bible and to learn uh, Hebrew. Okay? At the time that I was speaking to Tony. And I said, well, I, I could only go by the NIV and the, and the NASV, and they say, you know, her voice. And then he, and, and, and he did this, he, he tra instead of looking at the Hebrew, well, I couldn't do it at the time either, but instead of looking in the Hebrew, he looked at the lexicon. And so he, he traced this uh, uh, Hebrew word. Let me see if there's a lexicon, the number, though. He, he traced a 6,963 number from Strong's. It says H there because it's the Hebrew side of things, you know. So when you go to the Greek New Testament, in this app, it's going to say G, uh, whatever, uh, uh, 2316 for, for God's name, you know, uh, for the word God, Theos. Or Theos, you know what I mean? And so, I, yeah, well I, well, I mean, I'm just seeing the NIV and the NASV, and it's and uh, her voice, so I don't really know what to tell you. And then he says, no, Angela, but I'm, I'm tracing this word, and this is say her in the lexicon. Well, this is the thing that I learned after that, okay? That's why we're always, always trying to improve, okay? Especially with a ministry, I had to learn Hebrew. I was forced. So I didn't know the answer to that. I said, well, I can only go by what the NIV and NASV are telling me. I mean, you know, I don't have a Hebrew Bible with me at the time. Like I said, I, don't, I didn't know how to read Hebrew, whatever the case may be. I didn't know how to, you know, read one letter in Hebrew. I mean, nothing. Nothing at all. And now I do, so let's look at it. When I bought a Hebrew Bible and I learned, you know, a little bit of Hebrew here and there, I said, well, you know something, um, what I learned, Tony, or I don't know if I told Tony this, uh, but uh, maybe I, I said, said it's another witness, you know, down the road, you know. I said, well, you have to get it from the, you get the, the her construction from the textual form, not the lexicon. The lexicon is going to have, this, you know, the word for cry is the lexical form, and it's not going to have the word her there, okay? It's just like, and I'm saying this right now, it's just like echad. Well, there's a form, echadim, okay, it's in the plural, and that's found and recorded in Genesis chapter 27, verse 44, about going to uh, his uncle's uh, house for a few echadim. It's from echad. From a few for a few days while your brother's anger subsides. But that's Echadim, but you're not gonna see Echadim when you go into a lexicon. Now in Brian Driver Briggs, they're gonna show you Echadim. But like if, if you're gonna look at mouse or you're gonna look, look at vines, if, my, if vines even has it, or whatever other lexicon you're gonna be using according to the Hebrew, okay, um you just you're just gonna see the word echad. Now bring that thought to this. Well, you're going to see only coal in a lexicon. You're going to see coal spelled out, cough, wow, with the, with the O class, the little dot over it. Now, I'm right under the, the 9 in uh, 6,963 at the bottom, okay? So you have the cough. It looks like a, it looks like a P, but it's actually a Q in Hebrew. Cough, okay? Cough. Not cough, that's another letter, but cough. Okay? Looks like a P, but it's not a P. It's a Q. Okay? And then you have, remember that you read Hebrew like Aramaic from right to left this time. Okay? Not from left to right, like Greek. Now I'm in the middle. I'm at the middle letter, and that's a wow or a vav. Okay? That could be either a V or a W according to Hebrew. Okay? Over here is transliterated into a, into a, into a, um, uh, well, actually, over over here is acting like a vowel, so it's not a W or a uh, or a. It's not acting like a W. It's not acting like a consonant. It's not acting like a V or a W. It's just it's acting like a vowel, like the Yod in Elohim. Okay, it does, and so they're going by the O class that's over it. You see the dot uh, over the middle letter. Okay, is the dot right underneath the nine? That's an O class in Hebrew. So when you're looking at a dot underneath a letter, you're probably looking at the I class as an I. 
And then uh, if you're looking at a dot over a Hebrew letter, okay, one dot, you're looking at the at the Holem O class. So that's the O, okay. So so far we have Ko, Q O. And then what's the last letter? Lamed. It looks like an upside down four, doesn't it? That's an L in Hebrew. Okay, and I'm right under the six in six thousand nine hundred and sixty-three. Call, call. K a uh, a Q actually, O L. Okay, but that's not the that's not the textual form. That's a lexical form, just like theos. Theos is found in John one one b, but it's not theos there. It's theon. Okay, because that's the contextual form. Theon is the accusative case construction, accusative masculine singular. Okay? When you trace Theon, that word Theon, 2316, you're not going to see Theon in a lexicon. You're going to see Theos because the nouns are traced uh, according to the nominative construction. Just like the verbs are found in the lexicon. Okay, I know the future tense sometimes is found in George Riker Barry's uh, uh, lexicon, but in, you know, vines and in mounts, it's complete expository dictionary of all the New Testament words and theirs and kittles and United Bible Society's uh, 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 Greek lexicon and uh, kittles. I mean, all those lexicons, I mean, they're going by the nominative of case. And then, according to the verb, they go by the... Uh, they have the the um, the verb listed in the construction that has to do with the present indicative form. Telo, you know, I will, you know what I mean? Or teleo, I think that's teleo. I gotta check that out, teleo. So you have to tell the witnesses they're they're not gonna actually find okay a uh, just coal in the text. Or, even better yet, they're not going to find cola in the lexicon. So the her side of it all is going to be found in the Bible itself, in the, in the structure, okay? It's just like the word Elohim. You're not going to see Elohim, that structure, found and recorded, okay, in, uh, what, verse 14 um, of uh, chapter 3 of Exodus in Hebrew. You're not going to see Elohim there. You're going to see another construction, Okay, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But well, that's not Elohim there. That's a different construction. Okay, so you have to tell the witnesses. Yeah, I know you don't see the word her, but you can't just go by the lexicon. You have to go by the the textual form in the text. Okay, the feminine side of things is in the last letter attached to that Hebrew word. Well, let's look at it. Okay? Now let's make sure that, um, that that's everything there. Okay? Okay, good. Now, you already saw that the, that the structure was uh, Q-O-L okay, in the lexicon. When you're tracing back uh, 6,963. But when you're looking at the text of Genesis, well, what, what is this? Oh, no, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Well, you see cola. Well, that was the spelling of that in Hebrew. Or it goes something like this. Kof, wow, with the O class. Lamed with an A class. And then he. Okay. Now, that's cola, but that's in the text itself. That's why it says, that's why it switches just from the mere, okay, voice, okay, to her voice, because they added a hey, okay, they actually added a vowel stroke underneath the lamet. Uh, it looks like a T, but it's not a T, it's, uh, it's an A class, a, a, a class like in the word father. And then they added a hey. So it's actually cola in the text. And that's why it cannot be logos or logos that the writer is speaking about in Proverbs chapter 8, around verse 30. Okay?
that's Cola, and that's uh, her voice. Uh, that's just a deal. Now let's get back to jo uh, John 1 1, okay? Let's check it out here. Uh, let's check it out. So, we spoke about NRK, and uh, that prepositional phrase is found a few times in the Greek New Testament here, and in verse 2, and in Philippians chapter 4, verse 15, etc. We saw in our other studies that the word logos or logos is found and recorded in Psalm 33 verse 6 where you see a K, um, logos creating things. Okay, that's in the, that's actually, uh, you see logos actually a word by the word of the Lord, okay, but you see the word logos actually or logos in the Greek Septuagint of verse 6 of Psalm 32. The Hebrew word for word, okay, is da bar, d a b a r, which means what? Okay, that's why in the Hebrew side of things, in the Hebrew of John one one, it says something like this: Bereshit haya hadabar, va hadabar hayaim ha Elohim va Elohim haya hadabar. Okay, so he's the word. Now, the first section of John 1.1 1, 1 has, has to do with the eternal subsistence of Logos. You can put the title like this. If you just want to use one word, just say subsistence or subsisting. It's from the Greek word huparkon, found and recorded in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. Has en marfe, marfe teu huparkon, who, being in very nature God, says the NIV. Okay. And that has to do with nature A or nature 1. The nature that he took has to do with nature 2 or nature B. That, that is the additional nature. That is the human nature, not the divine nature or the essential nature of Logos, okay? So, the first title of this verse that you can put under the umbrella of John 1 1 A is subsisting or huparkon, huparkon, subsistence, whatever you want. Just say subsistence. John 1 1 B has to do with intercommunion slash relationship. And that comes from uh, the Greek word, okay, all right, a pros or prosopon face okay and the third part of this verse has to do with nature slash essence and I call that the morphe or marfe uh, title so if you want to go by Greek titles you could put John 1 1 a under the umbrella of huparkon John 1 1 B under the umbrella of prosopan okay and John 1 1 C under the umbrella of Marfe or nature. You see? Subsistence, intercommunion, nature. Slash essence. The word logos was found and recorded. Around 330 times in the Greek New Testament. And they're probably using Synoticus to, to, to number these. I already said that Arche is found 55 times in the Greek New Testament. The word in is translated into Haya in the Hebrew text of John 1 1. Haya. Behreshit. Haya. Ha. The bar. Incidentally, the Hebrew he is acting like an article there. Okay, it's used as for an article. And it sounds the same as the Greek ha. Okay, so the article in Hebrew, you got you have around four articles in the Hebrew text of John 1 1 is actually ha. Behreshit haya ha dabar. Okay, in the beginning was the what? Haya means was. That's one of the meanings of, of was. 
avah in. Now they pronounce in. They will pronounce that in, because the it is now is is called it nowadays. En arhi in ologos que ologos in prostonte on que te os in ologos. En arhi in halagas. There's a lot here, guys. I'll tell you the eternal subsistence of. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Amazing. The finite verb ain is here. It's from Amy. Okay, showing you the status of logos or logos. Is in the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense, okay, is um, has to do with, with continuousness. Is any imperfect tense because the action hasn't been completed yet? Eganeta is in the aorist tense, a recorded, found and recorded in John one one three, or John one three, I should say rather. Eganeta. As in the aorist tense, it's a simple completed action. The augment epsilon is there actually, in front of the gamma. It's like the ed in Greek. Okay, that we use in English. So they put the ED in the beginning of the word sometimes. You know what I'm saying? To point out the aorist tense. You also see that in me verbs. Okay. Now. Again, we have to understand that this is say a poison over here. In the beginning, God created the Logos or Logos. It simply says He was. Now, somebody could say to me, "Well, He was in the world. Is that is that does that mean that does that mean that the world is 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 eternal? Or oh, that's the way that that my opponent Alexander Cruz, okay, uh, you know, was putting it. I don't know why." Okay. Well, guys, that's enough for now. It's a long study, I agree. Well, the first part of this verse has to do with eternal subsistence. You see, the eternal, continuous, timeless subsistence of Logos here. Yeah. That he is an eternal being and he's not less than God the Father he is equal to God the Father so we learn actually um, that and that's a proposition and it's showing you the relationship between two words it's showing you the relationship that Logos has with beginning, okay, or Che. We show the construction and actually the full paradigm of our Che, which means beginning here. It can mean ruler also. See Revelation in NIV chapter 3 verse 14. We show the full paradigm for our Che in the singular Arche, Arches, Arche, with a Yoda subscript, and Archein. We saw actually the Greek word aim, which is in the imperfect tense, and it's much different than the Greek word, okay, all right, epoison. We also saw that the scenario and our a poison hot as Tan Lagan doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible. 
It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the Logos. It simply reports that Logos was always in the beginning with Theos. We didn't really see in this study, but we saw in other studies about, we spoke about the article Ha, now it's called All, like All Canada. But we saw that All is an article in this, in this uh, text. It's a masculine singular nominative uh, article. It's, a, it's called a weak demonstrative. It can be used as a pronoun can be used uh, to point out special definiteness like Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 says we saw that logos or logos is in a nominative singular masculine construction Found 330 times in the Greek New Testament. Well, guys, that's it for now. Parting is such sweet sorrow. We will continue to look at John 1 1. future well thank you so much guys take care bye bye energy in halagas kai halagas se prastante an kai te as in halagas or energy in ologos ke ologos in prastante an ke te os in ologos thank you Uh, please subscribe to my channel, and um, we will look at the at um, at the continue to look at the full Greek construction of John one one. Okay, we will look and see how you put something in a nominative case construction, and how and how you put something in a dative case singular construction also. Okay, and uh, we will compare. Okay. Um, theos, which is in the predicate position to other adjectives, Greek adjectives, in our next study. Again, please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen. Thank you.